All right, I hope you can see me. I hope you can hear me now, Sharon. All right. Sharon, if you can hear me now. I'm going to go ahead and forget it. Verse 20. And then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. He said unto her, What wilt thou? So Jesus was asking what the request was that she had. She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on my right hand and the other on my left in the kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I be baptized with? They say, to him we are able and he said unto them you shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with but to sit on my right hand or my left is not mine to give but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father and when the ten heard it they were moved with indignation against the two brethren but Jesus called them unto them and said you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. For whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom uh, uh, for many. Uh, uh, so, uh, great lesson to be learned here. <laughs> there, the disciples, many of them, they sought greatness. And here you have a mother that was seeking greatness for her two sons. She wanted the one son to sit on the right hand of the father and the other on the left hand. You know, uh, mothers, uh, do, we, uh, do we have any mothers in here today? Anybody? Okay, we have several mothers here. Okay, we have a number of mothers here today. Now, mothers generally want the best for their children, don't they? And they like to push them ahead. And so she thought that, uh, well, I've got these. Uh, of course, your boys, uh, you, 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 your children are the best in the world, right? Every mother thinks they're boys. They can even, they could even be, uh, I've, I'm, I, I've, I've seen them on death row and uh, uh, the son had killed 20 people. And uh, the mother was there uh, at the execution and he got her on camera and she said, he's a good boy. I mean, I mean, on death row had killed 20 people. And so that's the way mothers are. They try to always take the best part for their children. And the problem is we try to, listen now, we try to, uh, on our own part, if it isn't our mother trying, we try to push ourselves forward. You see, now let me tell you something about Jesus. Listen very carefully now. When you, when you take Jesus as your Savior and you commit your life to Christ and you become a real Christian, what you, what you get is you get a cross, you get a cross to bear. Listen carefully now. You get a cross to bear. Now, it talks extensively about bearing the cross with Jesus and yoking up with him. And he'll make it like, he'll bring you through it. Everything will be okay. He's good. And, and he can bring you through it. But the life as a Christian is not a prosperous, uh, easy life. It's, it's a life of persecution. Now, so you, you don't want to hear this. You, you want to hear because it talks about us being glorified and, and, and you want the glory life. Or um, the Bible says that we'll be kings and priests. Problem is you want that now. That comes later. It comes later. Now we suffer persecution. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So don't forget that. You're going to suffer 
persecution. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, there's even some Christians, I think, they're not very good Christians. Let me just say that the, I don't know if they're Christians at all. It's hard to tell because they're so worldly. They identify with the world and they do everything the world does. And, uh, of course, uh, if you're a Christian, if you are a Christian, if all, I don't know, uh, if, 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 if you live like the world, uh, I don't think you're a Christian, but you could be. You could be a back, backslidden Christian. I don't know. But let, let me just say this. Um, it's not going to cost you much because you're drinking with the world and you're shacking up and you're, you lie and you steal and you're proud and you're arrogant and, and all of those things that are unchristian. You're, you're not a humble person. First of all, let me say this. You can't be saved at all unless you humble yourself. You have to come as a sinner to, to have a Savior. We have so many people today, Joel Olstein and the likes of Joel Olstein on television and many churches, they, they, they preach a prosperity uh, gospel. Uh, they, 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 they preach a positive thinking gospel. Listen carefully now. That it says if, if the, all you have to do to be victorious and, 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 and is you've got to think positively. No, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Uh, they push it and they have a lot of followers. But not many of them ever read the Bible much or anything. I, I notice these great movements that I see. I saw uh, a great movement here recently. Uh, and they have hundreds, yea, thousands of people come. You know what they come for mostly? Listen to the music. None of them are carrying Bibles. If you don't, if you don't have a Bible and you don't know the Bible and, and, and you, don't, you care nothing at all about the Bible, I really don't know if you've been born again at all. I, I mean, because it's, it's, it's the book you should love and... and True church is gathering, gathering of saved people should be a church where everybody brings their Bible to church. If you're a real Christian, you should have a Bible with you all the time. Some come to me, someone asked me today, I want one of them little Bibles, the, the, the New Testament and Psalms and Proverbs. That's okay, uh, I can give you that, and, and I have some other ones that are, are smaller. Let me see if I've got that one here, yeah. This, for, for everybody, uh, we gave out a bunch of backpacks for Christmas. And we had a Bible like this in it. Fairly small, you know. But it's Old and New Testament. And the, uh, the print isn't that bad in it either. It's pretty good. But, yeah, the Bible. I had to, one fella uh, last year. Uh, is he here today? I don't know if he's here today or not. Is, is the fellow here today that showed me his Bible like this? He, he got it last year in the backpack, and he's been reading it, and he showed it to me. He was just, I don't think he's here today. But he showed me that. It was warning. He was because he had the Bible. When you get saved, you love the Bible. You memorize the Bible. Uh it's, it's the book you have. It's the book you love. It's the book you mark. You cherish it. You have favorite portions of Scripture. And, and you love it because this is a Jesus book. It starts with Jesus, the creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you have no interest in the Bible, I did... Uh, um, most people don't have no interest in the Bible because they're not a child of God. I never understood the Bible before I was saved. How could I understand it? It's spiritually discerned. If you don't have the Spirit of God, what do you care about the Bible? You say the Bible don't make any sense to me, probably because you're lost as Hogan's goat and going to hell. If you don't reckon, you got to come like a simple child to say, I'm a sinner. I got a wicked heart. I believe Jesus died for me on the cross. The Bible says so. He shed his blood for my sins on the cross. 
He was buried. He rose again the third day. Take him as your Savior. And he, the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity, will come into your heart. But everyone that got a backpack, a lot of you got backpacks that are here today. You ain't even opened that Bible yet. I even gave it away or sold it, tried to get a couple bucks for it. I don't know. They were in the backpacks just like this. Other things were in there too. But the Bible will tell you as a Christian, you take on the position of a marked person. You take on the cross of Jesus Christ and you are hated by the devil and the world. You are frowned upon. You might be spit upon. You might be lied about. You will not be popular in the world. You watch out for these people that they call great Christians and everything and the politicians are real happy about them and and uh, Hollywood's real happy about them, and and uh, the sports industry is real happy about them. I wouldn't give you a nickel for them that say they're Christians, if they're Christians at all. You know, they, 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 they you, know, I, you know, someone told me the other day, they said, I don't know. I don't know if Colby Bryant was a Christian or not. He was a guy that could dunk a basketball. Yeah, he made millions and millions of dollars at it. Yeah, he's and uh, I don't, I, I don't watch professional basketball at all. Uh, I, I don't, I, you know. Sports are for kids. I had fun when I was a kid. I played football and all that, and even up till maybe I. I even went. I even played football in college. Maybe it gets a little bit too big, you know. Then, but I don't know. It's games and playing like that for kids. But you know, someone told me the other day, and someone on over there said, "I heard Colby Barnes a Christian." I don't know. I said, "I don't know. I hope he is. I hope he is saved." I was the only thing they talked about him in religion at all. <clears throat> I read a lot of stuff about his wild ways and cheating on his wife and this, that, and the other. I don't know. He could get over that and get saved. Don't get me wrong. An adulterer, a fornicator can get saved and turn from that. I don't know. I, I hope he was. He might have been a good family man. I guess he had the same wife for 20-some years or whatever. That's a good thing. I'm for that. But, but the only thing I read about him and religion was uh, it said... Uh, that the thing that he found that was very good and that really sustained him was his Catholic faith. Well, Catholic faith will take you to hell. It won't take you to heaven. Roman Catholicism will take you to hell. Uh, it's a sacramental religion. Uh, it's actually a vampire religion, Roman Catholicism. They say they're drinking the blood of Jesus every time they sacrifice the mass. Did you know that? Roman Catholic theology says every time a priest does a mass, actually the blood of Jesus is drank. That's, that's, a, that's vampire religion. That ain't got nothing to do with Christianity. You see, I don't like it. I don't care. I, if you're dependent upon the Catholic Church or the, the sacrifice of the man. One sacrifice. Jesus died, shed his blood, and rose again. You don't need no more. You don't need it. They sacrifice him a thousand times today. Maybe the Catholic Church probably sacrifices all around the world today a million times. Sacrifice a mass. Sacrifice. One sacrifice. It is finished. You trust the Christ. You don't trust the Catholic Church or the Baptist Church or the Methodist Church. I see some people that were agreeing with me for a while. Now when I got on the Catholics, they ain't so happy. Maybe they're Catholics. I don't know. There ain't no hope in the Pope. There ain't no hope in Mary. 
There ain't no hope in the mass. Yeah, I don't know if they say it. They used to say it in Latin. They kicked that blood and hocus pocus over that. They actually say that the miracle. Here's what it's called: transubstantiation. That's a theological term of, of Roman Catholics. And they say that when the priest does the hocus pocus over the alcoholic beverage, which God forbids, the alcoholic beverage turns into the blood of Jesus. Still do. That's spooky stuff, man. That's nigh unto witchcraft. They even got, I, I saw in, I saw in uh, New York, about two, three years ago, uh, they, they, uh, they, they had the blood, they had taken blood out of a pope years ago. They had the blood at a big cathedral in New York and they showed them lined up around the block coming to look at the blood of the, of the ex-pope. That's spooky weird stuff, buddy. They say they got pieces of the cross. I mean, <laughs> all the pieces of the cross the Catholics say they have. Man, uh, you could build a you could build Noah's Ark with all the pieces they got of what they say from the paws, cross. I mean, religion ain't gonna cut it. The born again experience is what you have, but what it brings you to, it don't bring you to high and mighty robed people shaking smoke around caskets and stuff. It'll bring you the cross. It'll bring you persecution. Let's stick on the Roman Catholics for a minute. Roman Catholics, listen now, Roman Catholics have killed over the years millions of and millions of true Christians, Roman Catholics, yeah? yeah? Through the Dark Ages, they slaughtered Christians. They tried to get them to recant. They were so diabolical and so wicked in the devil that they had special lotions that they would rub on the Christians. So what they would do, they would, they would they'd do the slow burn. And they rubbed, they rubbed this stuff on you and that they could burn you, and you wouldn't burn too fast and die too fast. And what would happen is you could be tied up and burning, and you could watch your flesh falling off your bones and still be alive to be tortured. That's how wicked and the devil the Roman Catholic Church was because they wanted you to suffer to the ultimate. They didn't want to just cut your head off or kill you just like that. They wanted you to, and they say, recant. Say you're not saved by the blood of Christ. Yeah. Bow your knee to the Catholic Church. Crazy. Yeah, watch out. What years was that? Huh? I can't hear you, Liz. Was that 1400s they did that? I think it was during the Dark Ages. It was during the Dark Ages. Yeah, it was before then. I forget the exact years. About 400 years, I think. Long time, Dark Ages. And uh, there wasn't much written. You didn't hear much, but it, it was there when the when were true. There were always true Christians. And I'll do it to the Catholic Church. So, I'm going to finish. The woman wanted her boys to be big shots. You want to be a big shot. You have to be a servant to be a Christian. Jesus said, if you want to be a Christian, it shall not be so among you. You don't have authority, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever shall be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man, capital S, Jesus, God, came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for money. Jesus gave his life. He was persecuted. He was shamefully treated. You will be too if you're a Christian. I don't feel bad when I'm talked about or, or whatever. When people write, we just had to uh, uh, paint over our bill. Maybe someone here painted. I don't know. Someone painted some things 
about Jesus on a couple of our buildings. Not this building, but a couple of our buildings. And uh, because they hate the Lord Jesus Christ, and and they hate that that's what you get. You get your buildings painted on. They might spit on you. You be shamefully treated. Have you ever? Have you ever took any persecution for Christ? You probably ain't even a Christian. If you're any kind of Christian at all, you're gonna have you're gonna be persecuted. You say I've never been persecuted. Maybe you ain't a Christian. Do you ever speak up for him? Could you take a could you take a sign and go out on the on the street and say Jesus saves and call people to repent? Oh, they'll drive by and they'll curse you and give you the finger and everything else. Get get a Jesus save sign out there. Yeah? You be persecuted, you be hated. Some real Christians go before these great, go before Joel Olstein's big coliseum that he rents. And they stand out in front and try to get people saved, tell people to repent. The people walking in there, they ain't got no Bibles, they never have any Bibles, and they, they make fun of those. I've, people even told me those people are nuts. No, them people are right that stand outside of Joel Olstein's. Them people are right uh, that are out of these great so-called Christian gatherings that aren't Christian at all. I listen to the preachers. Hell is never mentioned. Repentance is never mentioned. They have a big rock concert. Watch out. The glory comes in eternity in heaven. The shame and the persecution comes now. Those that are getting glory as Christians now and are being talked good about, that's not Christianity, not for a minute. He says you have to be a servant. He says you have to humble yourself. Where do you stand? And as they departed, from Jericho, a great multitude followed him, Jesus, because he's doing miracles, healing folks. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside. That's like you, blind. You're blind in your sins. And when they heard that Jesus passed by, they cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, the Son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should not hold not their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will it that ye will uh, do unto, unto you? Jesus has. And they said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. I pray your eyes may be Oh, you might not have, you might not have, you might not be uh, unsighted and be blind. It'd be a terrible thing to be unsighted like that. But you're blind in the eyes of your heart and you, and, 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 and you, you, you won't see the light. When you see Christ, you're lightened, and you get saved. They said, Lord, uh, that our eyes may be open. You ought to pray your eyes would get open today, and you'd follow Christ, and give your heart wholeheartedly to him, and follow him wholeheartedly, and forget about the world, the flesh, and the devil. So Jesus had <laughs> compassion on them. Got to have compassion. He had compassion on me April 4th and saved me. He touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. I wish God to touch your eyes today. You might not be you might not be physically blind, but you're spiritually blind. You follow the world, the flesh, and the devil. You never repented, and you've never been born again. You know if you're saved or not. Why don't you get spiritual sight today? God will say you can see. You see the light. Amen? Amen. I've seen the light. Let us pray, Lord, thank you now for the gift of God. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The glory comes in heaven. The persecution comes here. Turn to Christ. Repent. You'll be hated, you'll be talked about, you'll be railed upon. But it's only for a moment, this flash of time that is our life, that we count so dearly, but it'll be gone so quickly. Then eternally be there. The glory with heaven or the continued horror of hell 
and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Sin for a season. Damnation and punishment forever. Following Jesus, persecuted, lied about. But God being with us and giving us joy in the midst of persecution, the glory comes in heaven later, not now. Help us now. You that aren't saved need to get saved right now. Would you turn? If, if you feel like you ought to be saved, that's God talking to you. Just pray the sinner's prayer and get saved right now. You don't have to go to hell. Take his cross and follow him. Well, it won't be an easy way, but it'll be the right way, and the glory comes later, not now. Would you turn from your sins and repent? This is a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. I hope many of you did that today here and on the viewing audience. Help us, Lord. The way of the cross is persecution. Taking up our cross daily. The glory comes later in heaven. Help us to follow you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've received Christ today, talk to me afterward. If you need more help, want to talk, I'll be here. We're going to go eat now. Go find a seat. Our next service will be Sunday. 9 o'clock for Sunday school.